Hello there. Welcome to our program. I am Dr. Lewis Hassel, coming to you from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center, where I am a professor of pathology. Our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, which is a joint venture with Path Presenter and the Digital Pathology Association. It's designed to help you uh, have access to great quality digital slide cases for study and learning. Our case today comes from the realm of uh, soft tissue pathology. Uh, it's a patient who's uh, 32 years old and has discovered a mass uh, growing in his uh, lower leg amongst some of the muscles of his calf. Um, he's uh, not had any pain or disability with this lesion. Uh, it's not uh, invaded any critical structures as far as radiology can determine. Um, but uh, because it has been enlarging, uh, he's concerned about it, as are his uh, clinical uh, caregivers. Well, when we think about circumscribed soft tissue masses uh, in an extremity, uh, you might think about hematoma. There's no history of trauma in this particular case. Uh, lipomas certainly uh, would be a consideration and variations on that occur. Uh, although MRI usually can give you a good idea if that's what you're dealing with. And then the myxoid lesions, uh, which may have a high fluid content, also MRI can help uh, delineate some of those. You have to think about inflammatory lesions, abscesses, and so forth. Although these, uh, uh, again, no history of trauma or uh, fever or other infectious uh, uh, problems. Nodular fasciitis, usually not a deep intramuscular uh, lesion, uh, as was uh, uh, the presentation in this case. And so a consideration of malignancies comes into uh, uh, the picture as well. So in uh, this patient, a needle aspiration was done, which produced a fairly abundant uh, myxoid, mucoid material, uh, relatively sparse in cellularity, uh, but mostly bland uh, spindle and stellate cells uh, without much uh, in the way of distinguishing characteristics. So with that appraisal that uh, it was a myxoid lesion, that changes the differential consideration a little bit. We mentioned the benign lesions, the intramuscular or juxtarticular uh, the myxoid lesions could be a consideration, as could a soft tissue myxoma. Um, and then there are a number of malignancies, actually quite a number, which can have uh, myxoid features on uh, needle aspiration and, uh, of course, spinal resection. Those include uh, metastatic mucinous carcinomas, uh, a little unusual in a patient of this age group. Uh, and then some of the sarcomatous lesions, such as myxoid uh, pleomorphic sarcoma, uh, myxoid liposarcoma or round cell sarcoma, myxoid chondrosarcoma, myxoid leiomyosarcoma, myxoid da 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 da, you name it. Uh, just about any of those soft tissue tumors can have a myxoid components. And so uh, with the understanding that it's myxoid and relatively low grade, uh, the uh, surgeon proceeded to a uh, marginal resection to remove the lesion. And from that, we have some digital slides that we can look at. Here we can see it has a somewhat nodular appearance with variable cellularity, areas of low cellularity, very myxoid appearing, um, a few larger vessels, but not much in that regard. Um, and then these sort of uh, nested groups, uh, as you see here. Now, many uh, myxoid lesions uh, have a sort of nodular pattern. Uh, myxoid chondrosarcoma can have that appearance, myxoid liposarcoma. Low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma is typically described as somewhat uh, nodular, although we certainly don't see any uh, uh, fibrous component in this uh, tumor. Um, and looking at these cells, we see there is a background of delicate vasculature uh, here in several areas. A few of these larger vessels, but mostly we're just looking at very small delicate uh, capillary sized vessels um, and these uh, round, fairly uniform cells. We'll look at some of the other more cellular areas uh, as well as the intercellular uh, areas. Again, you see just very sparse blood vessels. And usually in intramuscular myxoma, you certainly would not see this kind of vasculature. So we're, we're thinking more in the neoplastic uh, lesions of uh, uh, myxoid liposarcoma or uh, possibly myxoid uh, uh, chondrosarcoma. 
Uh, here we can see a little bit more about these cells and we see there are a few areas where we start to get a little bit of a vacuolar formation, maybe a suggestion of some signet ring type uh, forms. They're not really epithelioid signet ring cells, but they certainly have this indentation and a clear vacuole. Uh, that's pretty good suggestion for a lipoblast uh, in this situation. It's not the pleomorphic uh, lipoblast with multiple vacuoles indenting the nucleus, but it's certainly enough to suggest that, particularly in the setting of this kind of vasculature. Now, it is important in these tumors to sample them fairly well. So I've included another uh, digital slide section uh, to allow us to look and compare some of the more cellular areas uh, in this tumor as well. Again, we can appreciate the nodularity to this uh, tumor. And as we come in, we can again see this uh, nice, vascular, nice vascular background uh, to this lesion. Well, uh, <clears throat> CD34 might be useful in some settings to demonstrate or highlight this kind of vasculature. Uh, but really to confirm the diagnosis and exclude some of the other differential considerations. Here we're seeing maybe a little bit more suggestion of lipoblastic uh, differentiation. Here's kind of a multinucleate uh, pattern cell. Uh, so for the classic histopathologists here, I think there are certainly some strong features to suggest uh, myxoid liposarcoma. Uh, but this is a, an entity uh, that largely depends uh, for diagnosis on the demonstration of the appropriate fusion gene. <clears throat> this is a fusion gene driven neoplasm, uh, which usually is partnering with DDIT3, previously known as CHOP, uh, and most commonly is a FUS DDIT3 fusion. Rarely, maybe less than 5%, it's EWSR1 fusing with DDIT3. This is most common in the extremities and usually middle-aged adults um, with this very prominent vasculature. The lipoblasts are helpful if you can find them. They do, uh, they are often very rare um, and usually have this signet ring type of formation. Now you can occasionally get a very round cell appearance to this tumor that can make diagnosis more challenging, uh, but the round cell variants versus the myxoid lipo uh, changes uh, tumor, they're driven by the same uh, fusion gene. Uh, and so while there are some perhaps nuances in terms of uh, behavior, overall these are uh, considered now to be a synonymous uh, lesion. So in fact, uh, the, we sent off for uh, fish testing with uh, uh, appropriate tissue, uh, both looking for the uh, fusion gene for myxoid liposarcoma as well as for uh, myxoid chondrosarcoma, uh, obviously was positive with DDIT3, negative with the chondrosarcoma fusion test. Um, and so uh, the diagnosis was uh, released and rendered as a myxoid liposarcoma. And that was our final sign out diagnosis. In the absence of <clears throat> significant mitotic activity, fairly low in this case, and uh, no areas of necrosis, this actually qualified as a uh, French system low-grade uh, sarcoma, um, and therefore this patient would not get uh, additional uh, adjuvant therapy at this point, but we'll get follow-up, of course, to uh, consider um, and exclude uh, recurrence. So uh, we hope that you enjoyed that, uh, and that uh, as with all of our cases, if you're interested, you'll come back and study those digital slides yourself. Uh, examining the slides yourself is a great way to cement the images and patterns in your brain so that it's easier for you to recall. If you've examined it and handled it, manipulated it, that's gonna be much more than if you're just watching me drive the slide. So uh, if you like this, please give us a thumbs up. We hope and plan to do more. And so we certainly encourage uh, subscribe, subscribing to the channel so that you'll catch our future releases as well. Um, and, uh, we hope that uh, this will help you to uh, become a better surgical pathologist and better able to take care of uh, patients that you may encounter in your practice. So until next time, thanks so much for joining me.